I'll ask Tanya to, to make a few comments and then we'll open it up for any questions people might have in relation to specifically it's the, it's the consultation on the A428, which is the Manningley Road opportunity. Oh, you can comment on other items as well, but yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, so the city meal is about a vision for the future of Greater Cambridge area. What do we want this area to be like in 2031? And it supports the local plans for Cambridge and South Cambridgeshire by making sure that we've got the homes that we need, jobs that we need, skills that we need, and the transport infrastructure to make sure that that works. So what's this deal doing? What should we do delivering here? Um, in, improvements in transport infrastructure and transport solutions in order to make sure that the local plans work. 100 million of government investment match funded locally, a smart infrastructure work stream in order to make the most of the big brains and big data in the city and 420 extra apprenticeships in the skills that we need for the economy of the future plus also a housing delivery agency which is to help bring forward some of the homes needed and to bring together public sector partners and on public sector land. The City Deal Partnership involves Cambridge City Council, South Cambridge District Council, Cambridge County Council, Cambridge University and the uh, Greater Cambridge, Greater Peterborough Local Enterprise Partnership all working together to tackle some of these challenges. Um, by 2031 potentially there could be 30% more journeys into, out of and around Cambridge in the light of housing and jobs growth. The local plans assume 33,000 new houses and 44,000 new jobs to 2031. And so what's the strategy here? It's to make sure that those trips are by sustainable means. So by public transport, walking and cycling, and that involves investment in various infrastructure schemes to improve cycling, walking and public transport. And also looking at how to, what you might call manage demand, i.e. to make sure that we use the space that we have better and um, to manage access into, out of and around the city centre better. Uh, what's What's happening, what's happened so far? Two consultations so far already done with great response, with very good turnout responses on the A428, and I'll move on to that in a minute, and the Chisholm Trail. There's, there are four days left to respond to consultations on the Milton Road, Piston Road, and Cross City Cycling Improvement Schemes. So uh, please have your say if you haven't already. And the latest is a consultation on plans or potential plans for West and all before and what could be done to improve connectivity to the west of the city, including potentially a park and ride or park and cycle at junction 12 of the M11. Um, what else has been done? Skills service called Signpost to Skills has been established between the City Deal and the LET being delivered by former future. So if you know learners who might be interested in apprenticeships and or businesses who might be interested in apprentices, it'd be great to get involved. Um, what next? The City Deal Board meets on the 3rd of March following the Assembly meeting tomorrow and we'll be looking at potential whether to consult on options for the Cambridge to Haverhill A30 A7 corridor. Um, plus we'll have a report on the A428 to decide whether to proceed to planning permission for the Chisholm Trail cycle link linking the uh, Science Park to Biomedical Campus by creating a link between the New Cambridge North Central Station and the Central Station and we'll also be looking at budgets and um, whether to invest in uh, smart digital work. Um, also coming up will be um, decisions in June on the Milton Histon Road schemes following the consultation 
and what to do next, next steps on city centre access and congestion following the recent call for evidence on tackling congestion and then in the autumn decision time on the A428 scheme, decision depending on planning permission, potentially decision to construct the Chisholm Trail and on the 1307. Um, in terms of the call to action, what to do next, um, the consultation on the Western Orbital includes a number of public exhibitions, so please have a say and come and find out more. Very good. So, so I, and, and the reason that, that someone from the um, Cambridge City Deal, Greater Cambridge City Deal, was invited, it was more to try and set out the timings because people have been very enthusiastic in terms of commenting. For example, 428, I think there were over 2,000 responses. But people are trying to understand how that then, what happens next and the likely timing for decisions and so forth. So, what we're saying is September for the A428. The Chisholm Trail is moving ahead, well, subject to, subject to decision. decision, but that's likely to be planning in the second half of this year in terms of a planning application or planning issues considered. If the if the board decides on March the third to um, go ahead with the planning yeah. permission, then as soon as possible once yeah. it's all been worked up. Milton Road is due, so that's that's consultation finish very shortly Monday. Monday, and then that will come back to the board in June for the next steps. And then Western Orbital has just started, I think, which is the 8th, yes. and it finishes, I can't remember where, but, but it's, it's a period of time for people to consider that. And that's quite a material exercise as well in terms of what's being contemplated. I've got questionnaires and postcards if anybody wants Western Orbital material. So, any questions from people? Councillor Hipkin first. Tanya, um, it's right, isn't it, that there, there are two phases which are currently under consideration. There's the first phase of the 100 millions in the scheme, which have got a rather urgent, if you like. And the Western Orbital, I believe, is this very much a second phase project. Um, what slightly concerns me is that we're already 18 months into that first five-year period, um, and we, you know, the outcome of the consultation, you, you know as well as I do, on the Milton Road and East Road, is overwhelmingly to reject. Um, and on the A428, I think uh, there's a good deal of public hostility to almost every, every scheme that's envisaged. So, uh, do you think there's going to be a real problem about getting things done in the you know strict time? I mean, the government is saying not only do we want these schemes to be up and running, but we want demonstrations that they are actually achieving the economic goals that we have in mind. So, you know, I'm just anxious to know how we're going to get all of this done within the next three and a half years. Okay, well, we'll take a few questions and then Tanya can answer. So the next one I had was Penny. Um, oh, my um, communication, um, can it be improved? Um, I'm, I'm one of many of the you know, 2,000 responses where you, you send all the stuff in and you never get an email or any update what's happened. And you just could, if, if you bother to you know, present evidence or ideas, it would be very nice to be a bit more proactive communication with residents from City Deal. And I, I know there's a new communications manager, but the moment you just rely on turning up to a meeting like this to find out, or it's, it's all a bit serendipity, and for something which is supposed to be very professional, I think it's, it's a bit limited. Okay, um, then moving around the room, I have Councillor Geary and then Councillor Gillespie. Don't know if there. Yeah, I was wondering whether you could um, explain to us and to the residents how the consultation results are actually going to influence the outcomes, right? So we have relatively interesting consultation results on the Madding D corridor. But it's not clear to residents why there are us these bird's eye uh, consultation views, and then uh, the recommendation document moves forward with all three original options, with no real selection or any kind of impression that the consultation has made a yacht of a difference to the city deal. Um, the 
The second question I had was on the Western orbital. Residents are very concerned that uh, you know while you have uh, prepared very good uh, consultation documents for other consultations, there doesn't seem to be the necessary information. You, you the graphics you show for the Western orbital are basically three lines on the M11, which doesn't show us anything. Uh, doesn't actually give any kind of detail as to where, how a possible bus stream could run alongside the, the Western Orbital. And then you propose a uh, park and ride, but you don't really explain, explain it, uh, or you don't explain it very well, where the buses are going to run. Are we going to have lots of park and ride buses down Barter Road um, and then stuck on the Fen Causeway, or what is what is the proposal for the Western Orbital, or are, are they going to go around? Right. So I think another missed opportunity for the city deal yet again, um, which is not confidence inspiring. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you a question if you have it, and then we'll come back at the time and get some. Thanks, Ken. Well, Tanya, I really wouldn't want to do your job. It must be extremely stressful. <laughs> um, uh, I, I, I'm nervous as well. Maybe more because of the political mix of the city deal. It's, it's hard to see a good, a good ending coming from it. But uh, I want to focus on something which seems like a good thing, which is the, uh, the smart Cambridgeshire, um, the hack Cambridge, the move towards open data and letting citizens take part in, in gathering evidence. I'd just like to know a bit more about how data from Hack Cambridge will be used. I, I get the impression that it is, but I'm not clear on how. And um, there doesn't seem to be much that's publicised from the two Hack Cambridge events, which will um, be available to the public or other people who want to see what's, what's going on. Um, so maybe that could be improved. And another opportunity to, to do something similar might be with um, the Cycle Hack event in four months to put a lot of resource behind that, um, invite some, some of the coding community to take part in using the data that's there to remove barriers to cycling that might still exist after the, the calls for evidence. Okay, so we have, um, the, the first one is the, the timing of the schemes from Councillor Hipkin, how are we going to fit it all in five years and spend 100 million? Um, do you want to comment on that? It's I know it's a, it is a challenge, I mean, it's, you know, we are 18 months in it. Well, the City Deal Board was officially set up in early January 2015. It first met as a formal board, and that's when the schemes were prioritised. The triggers agreed with government are that um, projects need to be delivered on time, on budget, and those which are delivered before 2019 are meeting the business case assumptions and then if possible there would be some assessment of economic benefit of the investment so it's very much an economic growth investment yes it's tight we know that it's a huge challenge but it's a challenge that everybody is committed to doing their best to meet because it will improve our infrastructure and transport in the area yeah. That's very much the aim. Okay, so the next one is, is communication and how communication can be improved further. Uh, there's no such thing as perfect communication. You can always get better and I think we're always open to suggestions of how, of how to do it better. Okay. Um, then we have a specific, um, well, a, a, there are two parts of mm -hmm. Councillor Gearing's uh, question. One was, how the consultation results across all these schemes are actually going to be used and actually therefore what the outcomes of those consultations, how they will influence the, the actual specific projects that are being proposed. And the second part was in particular in relation to the Western Orbital consultation. You know, the, the, um, the level of specification of the proposals and uh, in particular in terms of, for example, the park and ride and where the buses run and so forth. So the, um, starting with how are the proposals going to be used, or how 
consultation response is going to be used. They are a fact that they are an important factor to be considered in taking a decision. And in terms of the A428, the report that's gone is very much an update report. And the decision that the board is being asked to take is agreement to look further at the three options plus a range of alternatives that were presented during the consultation. And do you want a short summary of the A428 consultation in numbers or they're not really time? Uh, yeah, um, I think a lot of people are aware of the fact that over 2,000 people basically uh, responded. Um, so, so I think that that's, that's I mean, it was, a, it was a very large number. So, can you just. I think the results are quite important. I have another question. Was there any evidence in the survey to suggest tactical voting on those people to leave? In the survey, may, um, in the survey, I couldn't tell you because I've seen the, I've read the report, but I'm not, I cannot say that I've read absolutely every response because that's what the reporting team did for us. There may have been some tactical voting. I happen to live in Newnham and I happen to have seen an email that suggests that people might have been, it might have been suggested to people that they vote a certain way. Well, can I just add the fact that the support, 67% on the Maddening Road, and I'd be very interested in Milton Road results come up with the same figure of support. So, I don't want to drill down into the actual specific results in it because basically, in effect, it has been kicked out into the long grass until September because the, the report, as you say, talks about exploring other things and then specific proposals coming to the September um, well, the cycle. Board, and the board and the assembly were clear that they wanted to make sure that people were encouraged to offer alternatives where they saw alternatives. I think it's important, well, it's up to the board on the advice of the assembly to decide what they want to do, but they may well want to just, investigate Yeah, just very quickly, because we, we're tight on time, just on the Western Orbital, that comment from, from Councillor Geary, just in terms of, the, it's kind of um, woolly, the proposals. Um, I know they're, they're different from the Milton Road schemes, because they are schemes where they've kind of been on the shelf already, and so therefore they're kind of dusting them off as a, as a, as a very detailed engineering scheme. And it's important to consider a range of considerations. And also, there will be qualitative stuff coming out of the consultation that people provide that's important. Okay, and then the final one was from Councillor Gillespie, which related to this Smart Cambridge Open Data, and, you know, will there be publicity and how will that be used and so forth. So, so uh, the Western Orbital. Um, so there are a number of options and um, I'd encourage people to come along to the exhibitions. Please do take a postcard if you're interested, which has got all the dates on. And the question there, if you would be interested in looking at and searching the community consultation, the options for Junction 12 include both a park and ride and a park and cycle. Okay, and, and if it's a park and ride, the buses are going down Barton Road, are they? Is that the concept, or they've not worked out where that goes at this point? It could potentially, could potentially go down Barton Road, but also okay. if you've got a bus link down the, M, down the M11, it could also go to Junction 11 and then join up with the busway there. Okay. Or indeed up to okay, any other, any other comments? <laughs> For some reason, I thought the most of all would be a cycle route. Anyway, is there a, 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 once the plans have all turned up, do we get another go at sort of saying what we think of them? The way. Or does that just like coming out of the With with Western Orbital. Um, I would expect, although of course it's going to depend on what's decided. I would expect that um, there would probably be a further consultation on a preferred option scheme if a preferred option scheme were indeed considered to be the best thing here. Um, sorry, I, can I just go back to something I said earlier? I don't think, on, on the point about tactical voting, I don't think that it's easy to say that that's what people did because in the end people will tick a box based on what they think. And sorry, I haven't answered Councillor Gillespie's question yet. No. Um, I think everybody felt that Hack Cambridge was a very successful event and there is an intention to um, repeat it. And, and the use of the data? And, and the use of the data, I'm afraid I'd have to get back to you on that one because I'm... because I'd have to ask the experts who are running that particular project. Okay. So perhaps that could be included in the minutes. 
Yeah. Yeah, we can follow up on that. I, it's the first I heard about this. I'd, I'd heard about the event, but it's the first time I understood that they were going to kind of bring in all the data as part of this overall exercise. If I can say a little bit more, the, the brief for the developers who attended both of the Cambridge events were based on challenges unique to the Cambridgeshire transport, health, um, yeah. the economy. So people were, were trying to solve these using technology. And I think the results would be extremely interesting for councillors to see, as well as the, the wider public. But there doesn't seem to be much of a, a write-up or a, a code base of results. Um, but I think it's something with, with great potential. We will follow up in a minute. Any other comments to Tanya before we move on? We still have two more items, so I'm just conscious I'm trying to catch up. And it's... No? Okay. Many thanks, Tanya. And I encourage everybody to... to... Um, participate in the um, Western Orbital Consultation. That's great. Many thanks.